Hey everybody, welcome back to Morrison Heights Family Connect. This is the weekly podcast of Morrison Heights Baptist Church, and I'm Tim Peabody. Glad you joined us, and please welcome our guest. We have Chris Williams, who is a resident in the college ministry, focused on ministry at Jackson State and on the 111 Project. Thanks for coming, Chris. Yeah, thank you for having me, for sure. How long have you been at Morrison Heights? So I started coming here um, my sophomore year fully, um, so it's probably been about the past three years. About three years? Yep. Good. And are you a graduate of Mississippi College now? Or are you working on it? I am. I'm done. As I think it was about two weeks ago, which is kind of weird. Congratulations. But yeah, thank you. What was your degree in? Uh, psychology and counseling. Okay. Did you like that? Yeah, I loved it. Um, I was pursuing that, hoping to go to OT school one day. Uh-huh. Um, but Lord kind of changed my path last summer during... COVID stuff and led me to wanting to do full-time ministry. And so okay, um, I still love psychology and want to use that in some way. But I never realized that psychology counseling was a route to OT school. Mm-hmm. It's not <clears throat> like, a, like official degree track, but a lot of the psych classes go, are prereqs for OT school. And so that's what I was pursuing. Um, but huh. the Lord changed that and I'm grateful for it for sure. Yeah. Now you're here, uh, mm-hmm. not just doing a residency at the college ministry, but uh, also being uh, licensed to ministry right. this semester. Yep. I'll be preaching June 6th, coming up in about a week and a half, <clears throat> and be my second time preaching. First time I've ever preached was actually overseas. Uh, spent a summer in South Asia, um, which was definitely a different experience than I think in two weeks it'll be uh, when preaching here. Yeah. um, I'm really excited to do it though. Tell me about preaching in South Asia. You were there maybe as a summer missionary? Yeah, so I was there for three months, the summer of 2019. I went through the MCBSU and uh, first week we got there, they're having like a, a youth conference for like the Baptist convention of the city I was in in South Asia. And so they, we had about probably 20 to 30 youth to kind of my age students come. And I preached on Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, Acts 8. And a lot of people ask me, like, that must have been kind of hard. But it was actually kind of great because I had to use a translator, obviously. So Mm -hmm. I would say something and, like, my buddy would translate it. And it would give me enough time to think of what I was going to say next. But... It was very exhausting for my translator, though, because <laughs> it was a lot. But huh. It was really cool, though. Now, you also went through the preaching internship here at Morrison Heights. Yes. Uh, I yeah. guess that was about a year and a half ago. Yep. I think I did that um, the year after I first did this. So I learned a lot through that preaching class and honestly didn't do as much that probably I should have whenever I first preached. So I'm... Glad I took that so it can kind of prepare me for the next week and a half. Yeah, like like almost anything, a little training goes a long way <laughs> yep. with preaching. Uh, being a seminary can do that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, can, you can learn things if you're willing to learn. <laughs> right. For me, when I started preaching, I wasn't very willing to learn. I was like a senior uh, in high school. My home church let me preach on Wednesday nights uh, uh, my whole senior year of high school which is a great opportunity. If I had been humble enough to actually learn from my dad, who was the pastor of that church, right. then I probably could have saved them a lot of miserable sermons. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was not really until I got to college and took a preaching class that I realized, oh, there are actually things you can learn that will help you be a better preacher. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So good job for learning that or for being willing to learn earlier, yeah. sparing okay. people. Yeah, I'm definitely grateful for that, for sure. So Sunday, June 6th, 5 p.m., Right. you'll be preaching at Morrison Heights. Yep. Good. Looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. It'll be a great time. Uh, tell us more about your life. Where are you from? So I'm actually from Madison, Mississippi, so I've lived in this Jackson area my whole life. Well, we'll, f- we'll forgive you for that. <laughs> uh, we welcome you anyways. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, you grew up in Madison, go to Madison Central? Or? Yep, graduated Madison Central in 2017. Mass Central Jaguars are actually doing pretty good in baseball right yeah, now. We don't want to hear about that. <laughs> um, so I kept up a little bit with that. Um, but yeah, I graduated from Mass Central then and came to Mississippi College. And Lord just did a lot of amazing things in my life 
throughout college and main instruments of that was this church was Morrison Heights really? and um man I'm just so grateful for all that the Lord has used Morrison Heights in my life to kind of train me open my eyes to a lot more things with like my relationship with the Lord and doing ministry I would also like propelling me for the future as well what's different in your life as a result of coming to Morrison Heights I think the biggest thing is true biblical community um a place where I can have other guys my age and going to a place where I can be known uh, by others like fully. Uh, that was probably the biggest game changer in my life was coming to Morrison Heights sophomore and on to junior year and getting to know some of my best friends, two of my roommates that I live with now and they know everything about me. They hold me accountable to stuff that I struggle with and that was just something I never had growing up, and that was huge. And mm. yeah, that that was definitely like probably the biggest game changer. Is it the huddle ministry that brought that? Yeah, for huddles you? through college ministry. Um, sophomore year, I was huddled by a guy named Thomas Gray. Y'all might know him. Um, we know Thomas. <laughs> he'll be preaching in June as well. Right. Yep. And so Thomas is actually my <clears throat> big and char at the MC, and so he kind of discipled me and brought me into Morrison Heights, and then. All right, people don't know what a big or Shawreth is. So <laughs> Shawreth is the club at Mississippi College right. Men's Club, and the it big is. is like your the guy that's kind of your sponsor a year yeah, or two ahead of you. Bigger brother, kind of. Okay. Um, and so then that was sophomore year, and then these past few years, my junior and senior year, Drew Dabbs has been discipling me, and that has been instrumental as well. Right on. Well, that's cool. Uh, where do you see yourself going after this year? You know, the, the residency is set up kind of on a yearly basis, right? right? Mm-hmm. You, do you know where you'll be after this? Yeah, I'm not sure yet. Um, Lord willing, right now, I'm pursuing uh, the International Church Planning MDiv at New Orleans. Oh, nice. It's a two plus two program where you do two years of stateside seminary and then you finish the rest of your degree overseas. Mm-hmm. And so um, I know I'll be here for sure this year doing ministry at Morrison Heights. Um, but I know there could be an opportunity for me to extend that residency the next year or um, move down to New Orleans to finish out at the state side of part of my degree. Yeah. And then, Lord willing, hopefully go overseas in the next right uh, two to three years. Nice. So are you enrolled in New Orleans Seminary right now? Yes. I started my first class this past Monday. Okay. What you taking? So right now it's just the cooperative program class. Oh yeah, easy one. Um, just easy ones. Decided to take a little bit of a break this summer. Um, I'm taking the cooperative program class. I'll be taking spiritual formation starting this Monday. And Good. then I'm going to take a week-long worship leadership class in June. Okay, spiritual formation in person or online? It'll be online. Bless you. Sorry, <laughs> it's better in person. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of online work. but. <clears throat> so will you be at the Extension Center that meets at MC right. in the fall? Mm-hmm. Good. I'll be starting there in the fall. Good. Um, hey, I'm, a, I'm teaching spiritual formation, so I probably won't have you. Oh, uh, in class, but, <laughs> yeah. See, I told you it's better in person. I'm a teacher. <laughs> good learn from you. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, well, good. Glad to know a little bit about you. Are you, are you married, engaged, got a girlfriend? I'm not uh, engaged or married, but I do have a girlfriend. Um, do I know her? You do not. I don't think you've met her. Um, her name is Lauren. She goes to... Or she just graduated from Southern Miss down okay. in Hattiesburg. And uh, she's actually uh, just accepted a job to work at the BSU at Southern Miss. Really? For this next year. So Who's the BSU director there now? Uh, Chris Walters. Chris I Walters. I don't know. There was somebody there for 30 years that I can't remember his name. I want to say Lloyd Lunsford, but he was at he, MSU. I think was he Lloyd? was there okay. before Chris. Okay. I believe. Well, that's cool. So she's working at the BSU at Southern. Mm -hmm. And she'll be starting seminary, too, in the fall. She'll be doing everything online. Okay. New Orleans as well? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, good. That's cool. Uh, So while you're living here this year and your girlfriend is living in Hattiesburg, uh, who are you hanging out with? Hanging out with John Harding and the guys in the Uh, college ministry? So uh, I actually have a house... um, and I'm living with John Harding and another guy, a tool agarol. He also goes here. Oh, we know a tool. And uh, it is we. This is actually our first week that we're all in the house together, 
and um, it's been a lot of fun. It's we're all very different personality wise, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this all works out. But um, they're great guys, and it's just gonna be like an awesome environment to grow and hold each other accountable, and also host lots of college ministry events. There's always people pouring in coming through the house. Like we're starting to call it the Dahaj Mahal because it's on Dahaj Circle. Oh uh, yeah. It's starting to turn out to be a hotel because it seems like every night we have guys texting us asking if they can stay so they can come to church stuff. So we actually had two guys spend the night last night and we have three more guys coming tonight so they can do the youth dodgeball tournament and then stay the night with us so they can go back home. So Hold on, there, you have guys driving into Clinton yep. for the youth versus college dodgeball tournament? We've got to recruit because this is a big deal. So we got to bring in our <laughs> best. we got to offer them a place to stay. We might offer them a hot meal. And then hopefully we'll, well don't, destroy the youth. Well, don't pay them. You don't want to ruin their <laughs> eligibility for college sports. <laughs> That's very true. we got to watch out for that. I'm sure Drew doesn't find out. <laughs> That's um, hilarious. Well, my boys are very excited about this. You know, we're filming this on Wednesday. It'll air on Thursday. So uh, we'll know the results by the time yeah. this airs. I mean, uh, I think we already know what the results are going to be. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> my boys were talking a lot of trash with John Harding today, uh, which I guess when you're 14, you'll talk trash to somebody yeah. who's 6'8". Yeah. John likes to act like he's 14 and talk trash to him, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be fun. Uh, that's cool. Good, good to know a little bit about uh, you and what's going on. Looking forward to hearing you preach on yeah. on the sixth of yep. June. June sixth. June sixth. Well, good. Uh, you have a verse or encouraging word you want to share with us? Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> my time with the Lord uh, these past several weeks, I've been studying through Isaiah. Just fitting because Dr. Greg has been going through that in the past uh, several months. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days ago, I read in Isaiah 37, and um, this is Hezekiah's prayer for deliverance against the Syrian king. And I, th I just thought this was really cool, and it spoke to me in a powerful way. Um, so I'll read it real quick. Um, Isaiah 37, 16, it says, <clears throat> O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations in their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are the Lord. And that was just really cool and really spoke to me in a powerful way about, because um, early in this passage, like the Syrian king is trying to get Hezekiah to trust in gods, false gods, idols from all these other countries. And Hezekiah very boldly says, no, trust the Lord, brings this prayer to the Lord to ask for deliverance from the Syrian king to save the Israelite people. And um, the Lord does that. You see that in the rest of the chapter that the Lord does it, but my favorite verse is at the end when it says that um, when Hezekiah asked the Lord to save him, it says, save us from his hand so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are the Lord. And so just keep that perspective of like hardship struggles that we go through, um, evil temptation that we face, trusting the Lord with that, trusting the Lord instead of things of this world um, for the sake of God's glory among all the kingdoms of the earth. And just the beauty of that and about God's glory among the world. Um, so yeah, I just love that and um, hope that will speak to someone um, right as well. Thank you. Uh, we're going to pray and <clears throat> I want to remind people in our church to pray for a few who are in the hospital. George Rush got out of the hospital Wednesday. Um, Terry Defabaugh is, uh, is not doing well at all. Remember him in your prayers. Um, and Judy Fortenberry lost her sister. Her sister's name was Dottie. Uh, so remember that family in your prayers as well. There are others, several surgeries this week, uh, so just keep them in, in your prayers as well. Um, well, would you like to lead us in prayer? You don't have to remember all those names, but uh, just pray for our church. No, for sure. I'd love to. Lord, thank you so much for um, today and for your grace and your mercy. And thank you so much for uh, saving us from our sin and saving us from evil. 
um, just like you did for King Hezekiah. And Lord, we know that this is all for your glory among all the kingdoms of the earth. And so, Lord, I pray that we would press into that and that we would trust in that and that you would just use us in accordance with that. Um, Lord, I just pray for all the families in our church and the people that are hurting, maybe that are experiencing some of that pain or suffering, and specifically church members that are in the hospital uh, battling various things or having surgeries. Um, I pray that you just be with them, that you would comfort them, and uh, pray that they would not trust in the things of this world, not trust in idols from um, every which way, but Lord, I pray that they would trust in you and that you'd be glorified through all of this. Um, Lord, we love you and we praise you. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus, and just use us for your glory. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Chris Williams, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Enjoyed getting to know you a little bit. I know folks in our church are happy to know you. Uh, looking forward to seeing you around for at least a year before you head down to New Orleans. Sounds good. Uh, where do you imagine yourself planting a church in the future? Where would you like to go? Man, I would love to go anywhere, Lord willing, in 1040 window. I really feel led to go to a place that is unreached where there is isn't any other work going on where there are no believers, no churches. And so I'd really love to go anywhere where the need is the greatest. Um, I'm kind of biased with South Asia because I love South Asian culture and really enjoyed my summer there. Um, so if I had to pick a place right now, I'd love to go there, but I'm open to wherever the Lord leads. South sure. Asia, like India? India, Pakistan, really anywhere. <laughs> Have you been to Pakistan? I've not, but I've always wanted to. Though I hear it's nice. <laughs> yeah, a lot of conflict going there, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a ten forty window. Just to make sure people know what we mean by that. It's basically North Africa, Middle East, and South Asia. Right. This area between ten north and thirty or forty south. Is that right? right? Mm-hmm. Ten north and forty south, uh, just in the you know the continents that aren't on our side of the world. Right. So it's where I'll. The largest concentration of unreached people groups right. would be in, in the yep. world. Sure. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. It was good Anything talking else. with you. And thank you for being on the podcast with us this week. Uh, hope to see you again next week. This is episode number 90, by the way. So if you haven't thanked Tom Rowden, you need to thank Tom for filming 90 episodes of the podcast. And possibly more importantly, because the more thankless job... <laughs> is what Paige Atkinson does. Every time when we have a title and a description of the podcast, it's because Paige Atkinson sat there and wrote out the title and description for us. So that's a thankless job. You need to thank her for this. If you appreciate the podcast, remember them. So that's it for episode 90 of Morrison Heights Family Connect. We love our family.